Hey guys, welcome back to the Passing Money Plan. We're going to be talking about stocks, but more so taxes related to stocks. So the reason I wanted to talk about this one is because I always hear from people fascinated with the amount of money you can make on the stock market that you can make. I want to emphasize that. But the reality is there are taxes at the end. There's not as many tax benefits, probably slim to none, compared to real estate. And so people often forget that when you're trying to do all these penny stocks and cryptos and stuff, you're going to get hit with the big tax bill if you were one of the, say, lucky ones or whatever in these in these stocks. So, I don't know, Kirby, I just want to go down like... You know, short term capital gains, long term capital gains, kind of explain what it is and get everybody familiar with um, with taxes. Yeah. So, I mean, what we're trying to do is uh, talk about the implication of tax. I mean, let's let's get it understood. Don't you don't want to or not want to invest in stocks because of the tax implication. Right. Um. The more money you make, the more money you're going to pay in taxes. That's life. If you lose money in the stock market, you get a write-off in taxes. I mean, that's how it works. But the tax implication shouldn't be the end-all, be-all of if you should invest or not. Most of y'all work a 9-to-5 job, get a W-2, and you probably get a tax return anyway. So worried about uh, the tax implications, like that tax return check, is some uh, money for mana or God just handing you extra money. No, your t- a tax return is money you overpay the government. So stop worrying about a tax return. Um, and I'm not gonna be the grumpy old man today that Alex think I am, but we just gonna get into the, we're gonna get into the tax implications. So Alex, what you got? Yeah, no, I just wanna make everyone aware. So like Kirby said, you don't wanna be deterred from investing in the stock market. Um, just because of the taxes. The taxes are actually, if you're investing long term, it's a lot better than, say, income taxes because long term capital gains tax is taxed from zero to 20%, depending on how much you make and what your income bracket is. So 20% Mm -hmm. being the max, you know, compared to personal income tax, where I believe it's at 37% being the max, depending on, you know, those at the maximum or not maximum income, but the highest tax bracket. So it's a 17% difference. So investing long-term has more tax benefits than it does with, you know, active income in that sense, which would be short-term trading. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I just want to know what you say, long-term capital gains, what is considered long-term capital gain? So long-term capital gains would be anything that you sell. So anything that you buy, and hold for more than 366 days and then sell afterwards. Okay. And then so with long-term capital gains, that's the, you know, that's that's mostly what we talk about is when you're buying the stock, you're holding it for the long term. But you know, you got the you got the uh hot stock guys out there, you got the you got the option guys out there, you got the you got the uh trader forex people out there. So just to give you an understand, when you train it, when you trade in options. When you're trading options, uh, and it's at a short and it's short term. So anything that's you know shorter than 365 days, you're taxed at the or your ordinary income bracket. Um, so no matter if it's stocks or options, if you hold it for less than 365 days, if it's a if it's a gain, you're taxed at your ordinary income. So if your ordinary income is taxed at 28%, then that's what your that's what your your stocks is taxed at. But in the inverse, if you're uh if you lose money, it's better to have a losing stock and sell it early than hold it longer and sell it. Just FYI. <laughs> it's 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 better to do that. If you know it's a turd and you're not gonna hold it for a long term, it's best to get rid of it before 365 days instead of holding it longer because then you get less of an impact on a, on the depreciation or write-off from it. Uh, but all in all, short-term 
trades, you know, option trades, things of that nature. All of it is taxed at ordinary income. So it could be anywhere between 10% to 37%. So 10% is the lowest bracket, 37% is the highest bracket, but you're taxed at ordinary gains when you trade, when you do the day trade, when you do the swing trading, when you do the six months trading, when you don't hold it for more than 365 days. I mean, when you hold it less than 365 days, all that is considered short term trading and you're taxed at your income tax bracket. Absolutely. I've heard, like, I remember during the um, 2020 bull market 2021 no 2021 bull market um i was hearing people pulling out like at work i was hearing people withdrawing from their 401ks investing in the stock market seeing huge returns and then thinking to themselves oh i can leave my job but then at the end they got hit with all these taxes and then they were upset and so that's something to keep in mind and as you progress to learn in more about the stock market and become a skilled trader, if that's what you do, or an investor, there are, would you agree, or there are different ways to minimize those tax burdens, such as, you know, not to go too in-depth, but um, tax loss harvesting and stuff like that. So it's something that can yes. be learned. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm no, sorry. no, I was just... That's it. Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, it's different. It's different avenues out there that you can do to, you know, subjugate that that tax bill. But I don't want to get into that because that's a whole nother video of tax loss harvesting and things like that. I mean, I take I do it all the time just to show a loss. But okay. but that's just the avenue that's out there. But I mean, it goes back to. You shouldn't think that you can, in, in America, you can't make money and you don't have to pay no tax to the government. If you're paying tax to the government, then that means you're making more money. So stop being a greedy pig. Start being like Alex and just pay your taxes. You should notice I didn't say be like me. <laughs> Start being like Alex and pay your taxes. No, I'm just playing. But no, but no, just go out there and, you know, make the money. I mean, is it ways to get out of, I mean, out of paying it, you know, write-offs and tax loss harvesting and things like that? Yeah. But what we're trying to do is get you on the field of playing the game. Now, we can go into the nuances of it, but I know a big drawback is people worried about the taxes. How much do they tax? How much do they tax? You're making more money. So I'll just give a rule of thumb for everybody. Whatever profit you make in the stock market, no matter if it's short term, long term, you just divide it by 33%. So if you sell something and you want to go do anything, 33% of it, you just set it aside, leave it in the brokerage account or whatever, take out 66% of it, and then go live your life. Maybe if you held it longer than 365 days, then you won't have to take all that 33% out of there. If you held it for shorter, maybe you will have to take all the 33% out of there. But if you just take the 66% of all the profit that you made, you know you have the taxes covered, then you go on to live your life. You shouldn't be sitting here. Your financial decision should be about how much I'm going to have to pay in taxes when it comes to investing. Oh, I'm not going to invest in that because I'm going to have to pay so much of tax. Just go do it. And the last one, it's dividends, uh, dividends. So when you get those dividend checks, you know, on a quarter, monthly uh, or yearly basis, the only reason why I say yearly basis or every six month basis, because Disney used to pay a dividend every six months instead of the quarterly or the monthly that you see some of these closed in funds or some of these REITs do. Um, a qualified dividend, you know, and it has to be qualified. It has to be a reputable company. So like when those REITs, those REITs count as ordinary income. So just like, you know, I don't know if you knew that, Alex, or not. But those REITs, those REITs are that comes in monthly, that's taxed as ordinary income. It's not taxed as a qualified dividend. But I mean, dividend kings, aristocrats, and things like that, those are qualified dividend companies, you know, like Apple, uh, Microsoft, Altria, uh, anything in the Dow, those are qualified. And then so what you're taxed at, the qualified dividends for those are taxed at 20%. I mean, it can be taxed a little lower, but the qualified dividends, the maximum that it can be taxed is 20%. So if you're in a lower tax bracket, then you're going to pay a little bit less. 
Uh, you'll pay a little bit less uh, on the dividends, but it's 20% on dividends. And but again, collecting dividends, reinvesting dividends, all that other stuff, that shouldn't deter you from buying them because you have to pay taxes. It's pennies on the dollar for the taxes. 20%, 20%. And I mean, again, especially for the people that's getting tax returns. If you right now, if you start investing and you start having to pay taxes on dividends and profit tax, only thing it's going to do is lower your tax return. You're still going to make your money. Your tax return will get lowered until all the money that that you get back in tax returns is depleted. Then you'll have to pay. So it's nothing. It's nothing extra added into it. It's just you receive a less tax return, but you made more money in the stock market. So that shouldn't even matter at all. Balance what you got. Yeah, just to close it out, I just want to give like a disclaimer too for everyone that's maybe watching this video that's interested in starting to invest in the stock market. Um, taxes is the reason why any brokerage account will ask you for your social, for all your personal information. It's just like applying for a job. It's just like uh, setting up a bank account. Any brokerage account is going to require this information for you to enter into the u.s stock exchange so uh, i see a lot of people get deterred from investing because they're afraid to give out their social security number so that's why these brokerage these brokerage firms ask for this information but and, and the last thing last thing is we're not you know cpas and tax professionals i'm just reading and letting you know based off my history and my knowledge and what they say on google I mean that, but these are the laws of the taxes. But talk to your CPA if you have a CPA, H and R block, you know, whoever, whoever you use, and ask about it. But you can look this information up for yourself on the tax code website. This is what the taxes are for certain stream streams of income, no matter real estate, stocks, dividends, or what have you. With all that being said, please like and subscribe. If you have any other questions and you want us to do a video on one of the topics that you have in the comment section, please comment below. Please subscribe and we will see you in the next video. See you guys.